So hi, my name is Henry Egloff and this is going to be a very basic uh, demonstration of creating animation using Adobe Animate CC. So I've just opened up the program and I'm going to create a new document. Now the document I'm going to pick is ActionScript 3.0. I think this is the most standard type of document that you would create in um, Animate CC. However, you can create documents specifically targeted for different kind of platforms or outputs. But I'm just going to pick ActionScript 3.0. Now, regarding the interface, if I was to go up to the window workspaces, you can see that I'm using the classic workspace, which has the uh, toolbar on the left and things like the properties and the library over on the right and the timeline down the bottom. And this, of course, is the movie area. So what I'm going to do is just grab one of the shape drawing tools. In this case, I'm going to grab the rectangle. Now, before I draw a shape, I'm just going to be mindful of what is set for the fill color and the stroke color of the shape. Um, sometimes when I'm starting off, I tell my students that you may be better off to go into the stroke and just set it to nothing. Um, I'm going to explain why in a second. But just for now, I'll, I'll leave it the stroke with a color. So if I um, click and drag in the movie area, I can draw a rectangle. And if I hold down the shift key, it locks that into being a square. So that's the shape that I've drawn. And as you can see, it has a little stroke there. Um, the reason why I said it can be good to draw the shape without a stroke is that in Adobe Animate, the stroke and the fill it can be selected separately. So if I click on the fill and drag it, you can see I can drag it away from the stroke. So if I wanted to work with these thing, two things to combine, I need to select them both together, in which case I would click and drag over the two of them. And in if you're going to animate something, it can be a good idea to convert it to a symbol first. I mean, this is usually what you do. So what you would do is you would go to modify and go convert to symbol. And you can give it a name. It is normally a good idea to give it a, a good descriptive name, but just for the sake of moving quickly, I'm just gonna leave it on symbol one. And I'm going to leave it on the type movie clip. And this is the most versatile, um, just to keep it simple for now. So I'm just gonna click okay. And I've converted that to a symbol. Um, now, it, it used to be in the older versions um, of Animate when it was still known as Flash that it was a good idea to, like you really needed to convert something to a symbol to animate it. Um, converting it to a symbol adds it to your library and it allows you to use multiple instances of the same symbol. Um, and also when you have the symbol and you have it on the stage, what you have is you have an instance of the symbol, which you can also name, and then you can um, basically talk to that symbol with code. But just for now, I'm just gonna keep it on there. Now, this is my timeline down here, and this is a key, this is a key frame. Uh, a key frame is a frame of change, and it's represented by a dot on the key frame. So what I would normally do is right click on that key frame and select create motion tween. Now, tweening stands for in between. So if you have different keyframes, Flash will, uh, sorry, animate. I'm used to calling it Flash because that's what it used to be called. will basically um, create what is in between the two keyframes. Um, another little trick that I use all the time is straight away, what I do is at the end of the timeline, uh, the, the tween sequence, sorry, with the slider drag to the end, I just press F6 on the keyboard and that inserts a keyframe at the end. So what I've done there is I've created like another keyframe that's based off the first keyframe. So my keyframe at the start of the sequence and my keyframe at the end of the sequence are the same. And that allows me to create like a nice looping sequence. So what I could do here is I could drag the um, square to another position in the movie area. And if I now drag the slider, you can see um, the square moves to that position and then it moves back. And I could also create another position here. So now 
my square is going to move to one position, then to another, and then back to the original position. So this is just the simplest way to create an animation. Now, what I'll do now is I'm just going to save this um, document and I'm just going to put it on my desktop and call it, I don't know, demo one. And if I was to press um, command return on the keyboard, what it does is it generates the SWF. So I've got the two files here. I've got the FLA, which is the flash file, which is the compositional kind of file, and the SWF file, which is the movie of the um, animation. It's a separate file, and it will save that into the same location as where I saved my FLA file by default. So that's really it in a simple nutshell. Um, sometimes it's nice to take it a little bit further, and some of the things that you can do is you can click on these motion paths here, and so you can change the path of the animation that the square will travel on. And some of the other things you want to do now, notice that I'm I'm kind of I'm aligning it to the same kind of keyframes, but some things you can do is I can click on my square itself, and I can go and select the transform tool, and I can say scale it or even rotate it by clicking and dragging just outside it a little bit. So it will um, tween those kind of things as well. Um, there's another thing that you can do. Let's see if I can do this. Where you can move the whole entire sequence, which is very handy as well. And other things you can do is you can um, click in the timeline, you can click and drag on the end frame to drag it and that will basically extend the uh, sequence. It will keep everything relative but it will extend it a little bit. Sometimes you want to do things like you want to um, move keyframes or delete keyframes and the way I do that is I hold down the command key and then click on it and then I can click and drag it. Or similar to how I did F6 to create a keyframe, if you do Shift F6, that will delete the keyframe. And I think that that's all I'm going to show in this demonstration, just to keep it really simple. Again, if I do Command Return or Command Enter, um, it will uh, show, me, show me the uh, movie file that I've created. And that's all for now. Thanks.